So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Hi, villains, and welcome to For the Love of Paul McGrath podcast. And look, I'm just going to come out and say it. This one has to be a 10-minute tirade. I know the, I know the masses out there don't like it, but we're just very short. It's a, it is an early morning kickoff tomorrow against Arsenal, 12 o'clock kickoff. I'm actually really looking forward to a 12 o'clock kickoff. 12 o'clock kickoff. I'll be looking forward to it even more uh, if you could guarantee me that we're going to win. And I'm joined here by Paddy, and Paddy's going to guarantee me that we are going to beat Arsenal. Isn't that right, Paddy? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paddy's going to guarantee you he, that we have a good chance. And uh, Paddy's not happy that the matches that have 12 tomorrow. But anyway, let's just put it away. Um, I prefer the evening matches now that you can mm. get your business done during the day and go and relax in and have a beer and watch the game and whatever you choose to do watching the game, get a takeaway or whatever, but uh, that won't be happening at half 12 tomorrow. So I've got to tailor my day around it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. As you, as you said, they, they, they have, um, they have more problems than us. They obviously have their first choice goalkeepers suspended um, and also Matt Ryan that they signed from Brighton is struggling with a hip injury. Mm. Um, David Luiz, uh, who I don't really rate, is suspended, so I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. And uh, Kieran Tierney, who would be a definite starter yes. and would be a starter in any team in the Premier League, is also doubtful. So for one's fingers crossed, that a guy who I've admired from his time at Celtic, I hope he's, he's not playing tomorrow. Uh, yeah, for me, that's that's a huge one because I think the tactical flexibility that Kieran Tierney gives them and to be honest with you, David Luiz would have given them as well uh, is huge because they're down to their bare bones at centre half. Uh, they've got Holding and uh, Gabriel are probably going to be in there, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, which is which is grand. Um, well, when I say grand, they're two decent, very, very decent, decent defenders. And I think that they're going to give Ollie Watkins problems, but he's he's going to give them as much as he gets, should I say as well. Goalkeeper being out is huge. And this young Icelandic guy being in there, the young Isla- Icelandic guy that uh, had a crack off Arsene Wenger back in 2014, I think it was, uh, it had to delete a couple of tweets after he signed for Arsenal. And um, this this guy, he was uh, apparently he was an Arsenal fan and he he tweeted a few things uh, about Arsene Wenger not being um not being very good anymore, I think it was. But it was it wasn't too All bad. Right. It was just one of these things that the tabloids picked up on and said, Oh, this is embarrassing. You know, maybe he'd want might want to go back and delete a couple <laughs> of his tweets. Well, maybe why didn't you just DM him, tell him delete him instead of printing it in a newspaper for fuck's sake? But anyway, um, yeah, he's in he's he looks like he's gonna be in goals. Matt Ryan still didn't train yesterday. Um, I went looking to see that he trained today, and there doesn't seem to be anything on it. And I would imagine that you know, like if he didn't train yesterday. Uh, it would be, you know, it, it would be tempting yeah, fate, I think, to put him in goals. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. unlikely to start as well. But I think Kieran Tierney is the big one. Kieran Tierney gives them the tactical uh, flexibility. He, he allows them to play a three at the back or at least convert a three at the back when they're going forward, if needs be. Um, Cedric is going to probably go in there instead of him at, at left back. Obviously, more predominantly would be a right back, Cedric. But, um, you know, things like this, uh, way up well for Aston Villa because uh, you know we do need to kind of shift the pace and shift the point of attack over from the right to the left and from the left to the right I suppose an awful lot more we've been very yeah. much attacking down the left hand side and I think teams are just going to like like when you've got um, when you've got uh, Saka over there on the right hand side like he's played right back he's played right midfield he's played uh, played striker he's played everywhere he's mm-hmm. going to be a difficult prospect um, out he there is. with Bellerin yeah, and we he's don't a want player. Yeah, and we don't want the we don't want the Jack to be marked out of it. Also, look, do you honestly think like they 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 can set up very much similar to the way West Ham did, and you just you just gotta hope that West Ham didn't give a blueprint for a team like this because you're gonna have Party and Jack in there, two no nonsense, big strong boys inside there again, just like we had at the weekend. 
uh, or like we had on Wednesday night against uh, against West Ham. And then they're going to have Lacazette, Aubameyang, Saka, probably Emile Smith-Rowe up there as well. So they're going to have a lot of movement and flexibility up there too. So we're really going to have to yeah. come with our with our head screwed on on Saturday um, for the game against Arsenal, I think. Yeah, um, Aubameyang has been been out for a while as well. He only he only came on for the last half hour on uh, at the against Wolves in midweek. Sorry, lost my mm-hmm. train of thought there. Um, so we don't know how fit he is or if he's been training when he was out. Um, I believe his mother wasn't well. Yeah. Um, so you know, you know, he 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 blows hot and cold. You don't know what you're going to get. Lacazette is very very similar. I I. I don't want to uh, say anything negative about him before the match, but uh, um, I think they could do better in the striking department, but he's likely to hurt you on the days that you think he's not going to. So you never know. And that's Emile Smith-Rowe has the makings of a good player as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, they, they, they can hurt you. Um, it's obviously not the best Arsenal team we've ever played. So I would be hoping that we get something out of it. Um, a little bit deflated after the other night, I have to admit, but, you know, we, we we'll uh, I'm sure we'll regroup and and will there be a different game plan going into tomorrow? Does Dean Smith tear up the game plan and not tear up the game plan, but does he tear up the blueprint? Do you can we see more than one change to this team? I I don't think Gazi is going to start. I think he's going to go back to Troy. But do you think there'll be any more than that one one change? Um, I d- I don't see I don't see it. Uh, the only other obvious one. Would be that Sanson starts, and um, probably he hasn't got enough game time to to do it. But he could he could possibly start. Um, I think we've got to be wary now uh, of teams stacking that right hand side to mm. to hurt Jack and and, and hold him back. Um, I think it'll be a case of uh, that we'll have to switch it. You know, I think in the odd game, maybe start Jack on the right and see how it goes and, you know, mix them over to the left and just give them something to think about. Otherwise, you're just going to look at the fact that they're they're going to hurt you down that side all the time and they're going, they're going to try and pin him back. But look, there's better men than me and you in there making those decisions. So yeah. I'm sure they'll, they, they will have, like you saw what happened the other night, the minute, the minute Jack moved over onto the right, we scored because they didn't have the same... Uh, same game plan, the same. They didn't have the same kind of. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah they, they couldn't they adjust. To, they over. couldn't adjust to the same. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Well, it's, um, yeah. Um, I think I think we might see another change in midfield. I think potentially we could see marvelous Nakamba come into midfield for this game for John McGinn. Really? Uh, I wouldn't be. Uh, it's a long shot, but I wouldn't be blown away by it. Mm. I wouldn't be blown away by it whatsoever. Although I, you know, you have to, I suppose, you know, you have to wonder as well. After every game, they seem to push McGinn out in front of the camera, which I love because he talks so well. You know, he's a he's a good orator. He's a good uh, he's a good mouthpiece for the club, and he's just a relatable guy. And I think that's one of the reasons why. And he probably puts his hands up to go out and speak to the, speak to the cameras as well. Um, but maybe I'm not, I'm not I'm not advocating that we drop McGinn. It's just listen, I, I'm 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 giving a devil's advocate here for. There's a lot of fans mm. who want changes. There's a lot of fans who want subs. You know. Well, I'm thinking of something we could do. Marvelous Nakamba came in and did absolutely fantastically in the in in the game that he played. Um, you know when McGinn was out. So you well, know he did. Yeah. Why yeah. wouldn't we gave him man of the match that day? Yeah. We did. Like like why why would it be a surprise if 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 he was to start him? You know, maybe he'd start him and maybe he plays Ross Barkley up up top or maybe he plays Sansa. Maybe he just, maybe he makes three changes. I, I don't know. I don't expect it. But I'm saying that like as a devil's advocate statement, it could yeah. possibly happen. And I wouldn't be absolutely, my jaw wouldn't hit the floor if it happened. Um, Because look, we can't, we can't all talk about wanting to, wanting to have squad rotation and making substitutes. And then if he starts players, you know, give out about the, give out about the lineup either. You know, you, I suppose you can't have to trust what's in, what's in store. Once again, I am shouting this down. I want to get really close to the microphone. I am not <laughs> arguing that McGinn should be dropped. Okay, I am not doing it. I'm just saying that if he did it, it wouldn't surprise me due to the fact that people are looking for rotation. And once again, he he's going to trust these stats. He said it before. We've spoken, and Greg Evans. Uh, everybody should go back to it. The article on. 
sprinting distances, yards carried, all that. Villa look into all that stuff. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I I don't think personally, given the fact that we've got a week's rest after this one. I can't see any wholesale changes. I can't see a change in midfield. I think Sanson will get another week's training before he's thrown in there, if mm. they're going to throw him in there from the start at any stage. And I really only think that the only change will be El Ghazi to come out because he was absolutely toothless in that first half. Don't get me wrong. He was brilliant in December. It's just, it was a different type of game and, and the game just mm. passed him by, I felt. And I don't think I was the only one that felt that. But I can't see any other changes. Um, I think we'll line up. I, I, I don't think we'll go 4 3 3 kind of the way we were the other night. No. I, th- I think we'll sit back into our usual 4 2 3 1 and it'll be a bit, a bit more cautious. Mm. <laughs> yep, and I, I can certainly agree to agree with that. Um, do we see Martin Odegaard for, for Arsenal? The much heralded wonder kid, I'm going to call him, uh, as he was 16 years of age, signed for uh, Real Madrid. Played some some really really good games for I think it was Sociedad and uh, and some other teams like that, but never really hit the mark for Real Madrid. Do we do we see him? Is he going to start? Will he start instead of Emil Rose Emil Smith Rowe? Hard to say. Um, probably probably short of match time. Um, might need to to put him in there for maybe twenty minutes, half an hour, and see how he is first. So you may see him coming off the bench. Um, you know, I, I think he, I think he likes Smith Rowe, and I think there's great potential there. Uh, he's, he looks like he could. He's the makings of a decent player, oh, so yeah. he might, he might persevere with him for a while and see how he goes. Um, you know, the, the Odegaard hasn't played an awful lot of football, so it might be a strange one to throw him in like that. But then again, you never know. Yeah, you just never know. Uh, they've got a good squad, lads. You know, the more I look at their squad and I see the players that they have, like uh, Pablo Mari is, 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 he, is, is he injured? Is he still injured? Actually, he is still injured. He's going to be yeah. out. Yeah. Like Callum Chambers, is he still injured? No, no, <laughs> I think he's all okay. Yeah. He's all good. You know, he's going to be defensive cover for them on the bench. Uh, they've got they've got a lot of horses in, in, in reserve for uh, the attacking yeah. positions and Martinelli, Pepe, William. um William, yes, William would probably be my uh, my irrational fear uh, mm-hmm. candidate for this game because uh, I know Chelsea fans thought that he was, you know, that he was. Uh, what's the phrase I want to use? Um, he was all huff and puff, and there was nothing, re- no real end product. product. There's, there's another phrase that that I was going to use there, but I think I keep it a small bit PG for this one because people will listen to it in the morning. Um, <laughs> but uh, William, William would probably be my um, my irrational fear for tomorrow because yeah. he just keeps the ball moving. He's very metronomic. I know he's in his in his mid to late thirties at the moment. Uh, he's nearly the same age as myself, but um, yeah, he's he's somebody that I'll be watching coming off the bench to try and control the game if they get a leader if they need to, need to. Need to to chase the game as well, and like Eddie and Ketia was was started at the start of the year for them. He doesn't seem to see much game game time. They have a nice little squad. If they start to click, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they're they're going to be a force. And, and Arteta has has been threatening to click with them for a while. You know, even since the start end of last year. William William has surprised me because I mailed a bo- I made a bold statement at the start of the season, thinking that he could be one of the best signings of the season. Mm. But he 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 started off well and never really pushed on. Um, you know he's hurt us in the past. He, he uh, made no uh, um, he had no problem saying that he didn't really like us after he got sent off against mm. us at Villa Park. Um, like I have to say, I admire him as a player. I, I think technically he's one. Of, he's he's a very very gifted player, um, and one we have to worry about, I suppose. And you know, he's the kind of player that could be thrown in from the start tomorrow. Yep. If, if he shows if he shown those signs of uh, wanting to get at us, that's that's the kind of uh, man I think Arteta is. If if somebody's really showing and training that, you know, or. If you look at the past of how how they've performed against teams, he would throw them in there as well. It'll be an interesting one. Um, I, I don't expect wholesale changes. Um, I think having to play runners and in goal is, is going to be uh, a hindrance to them, and they will defend a whole lot deeper because of it. Um, 
I don't think it's obviously they haven't got their first choice centre half as well. So who knows? Yeah, absolutely. And and I think look, I I would have no problem starting Truri and starting uh, Ross Barkley and starting Jack and having a very much if if Runerson is uh, is being started in goals, have a shoot on side policy. Teams don't do it enough. Like literally, a young goalkeeper in goals. Like his knees are going to be knocking for the first four or five minutes. Shoot on sight, have a crack, especially Traore. Like he's got a howitzer of a left boot. Get it, get get shots in on top of him. Let him spill them. Let Ali Watkins tap him in. You know, put balls into that corner. Let Ali Watkins take him out of it in the air. Whatever needs to be done. But I think that sometimes we teams in the Premier League show goalkeepers too much respect, especially young goalkeepers and goalkeepers, third string goalkeepers. And like we've seen it before. That like goalkeepers are confidence positions. If if a if a goalkeeper initially starts to uh you know it doesn't have much to do from time to time, you know, over a couple of games, he starts to keep a couple of clean sheets, he'd be bigged up by his manager. Let's go in there and let's put this guy down if he needs to be, you know. Let's let's make sure that we're ruthless about this against Arsenal tomorrow. And uh, you know. Let's 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 go for it. Have a shoot on site policy. I'm all for it. Pepper him in the first ten minutes if we get a chance to do he's, it. He's not a child either. He's 25 years of age. So. I know, but he's yeah. a child in in relative experience wise. I suppose yeah. really, you know, yeah. when you talk about playing at the top level, because like, where did he come from? Um, oh, it's, he it's getting... really Reykjavik, and he's he's been in uh, Norgetland and. Hehan in Spain. So well, I'll tell you if he was in if he was in Ireland or whatever is in Ireland, um, what you call him is going to know him pretty well. Uh, Johan. Johan Lang is going to have yeah. a pretty decent uh, handle on him. So so uh, yeah, I'm all for it. Look, uh, worry about him after the game, but uh, definitely don't feel sorry for him during the game. If you have a chance to shoot from outside the box, have a crack as well because like one thing this uh, Rob Holding and this uh, Gabriel will do is they're going to stand off people. That's why they need to have party and they need to have uh, Xhaka in there. Uh, but bring the ball through the middle if you can. Try and create space through the middle. Just p- pepper shots, pop them off as best you can and, and see what happens for the first 10 minutes. Um, make, make him, that's another make thing. him nervous. Yeah, make him nervous. Put the, put the fear in him. Like he's, he's seven Iceland caps as well. He's no slouch. Yeah, no, he's not. He's he will not. he will be nervous without a doubt. So, um, like he's only he's only played six games for the club in and out. So, we, we'll we'll have a pop off him. I'm sure of that. Yeah. Um. Another thing as well. My reasoning for doing that is trying to trying to get as much space and attack through the middle will be uh, if we are to stop a team from overloading on the right hand side. Well, the best way to do it is just not down, not attack down the left-hand side for the first 10 minutes and have them wondering, try and get them stretching across the field. And then once they get into that comfort, comfortability point, maybe even you start Jack in, in, in the centre and maybe you play uh, Ross Barkley a bit more um, a bit more withdrawn or something like that. But if a team thinks you're going to attack down the left, keep them thinking, come in the centre, come in the middle, attack down the right-hand side through, through Bertrand Traore, get at, get at Cedric, who's a good defender, a really good defender. You're not going to get at him easy enough that easy mm. but Aubameyang mightn't have the the tracking back ability on that side that Saka has on the other side we can have a go at this team absolutely have a go at Arsenal tomorrow and as I say I'm all for the shoot on side policy for the first 10 minutes and see what happens absolutely <laughs> put him under pressure put him under pressure as a big as big Jack Charlton used to say exactly exactly um all right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I said a 10-minute one, but uh, we've been over 10 minutes. We've been yeah. nearly 20 minutes uh, and more here. And a, so. a quick a quick shout-out to our under-23s who are playing yes. tonight. And for the first time, you can watch them live. So check out the official website. It's it's only one ninety nine, and yeah. the, the money goes to the Aston Villa Foundation. So Aston Villa it's, Foundation. It's, well, it's well worth it. So Absolutely. if you get a chance, uh, um, we'll wish them well. And no doubt we'll, we'll have a look at them, Neil, and see how, how, they're, mm. how they're shaping up. It's on in 28 minutes uh, when we record this. It's on in 28 minutes, Penny. So if anybody is listening, gets to get to this part of the podcast before you never the match, know. You never you're a know. super fan of the podcast. I'll tell you that much. Um, all right, lads, we're going to leave it at that. Thanks, everybody. You can get Paddy on at Philip Paddy. You can get me on Love McGrath Pod. Keep an eye out. There's going to be some, a little surprise. There might be a little website coming soon uh, if I can uh, figure this whole thing out. But uh, thanks, everybody, for all the interaction, all the all the chats, everything like that. And uh, here's to a great result against Arsenal. And all that's left to say is up the villa. Up the villa.